Okay, so welcome back. Hope you're having fun so far. We've got our game actually up and working a little bit, and I showed you how you could actually build this out, and um, I'd encourage you now to go ahead and create more methods, more buttons, practice wiring them in, because it's just good practice. Um, now we're going to show you how, once we, you know, update our values, we, we don't want, for example, to be able to just keep eating and keep having this go up higher and higher and higher indefinitely. There is a maximum food and a maximum health that we're going to want. And uh, let's go ahead and implement those in this lecture. So one of the things we can do is come down here into our C sharp method or our script. And in our update UI, we can check right here every time to see if our health is greater than a certain value, a maximum health. And I'm going to go ahead and make that a variable. So we're going to have an int max health, and we're going to have an int, I always think I want more there, an int max food. And Basically here, we can actually set them here if we choose. So we can say max health is 100. And let's just for kicks say we're going to make max food 200. So we can see uh, you know, that you can have different values here. It's just what you want to set. So then what we want to do is this is our first conditional statement in this course. You're going to use them all the time in programming. Most likely, I'm assuming that 90% of you have probably used an if statement before. If this happens to be your very first C Sharp course, welcome. But it's just as simple as type an if, and we're going to say if, and we have a parenthesis to enclose our condition here. We're just going to say if our health is greater than our max health, then we just want to set health equal to max health. It's just that simple that whatever is within these parentheses it's just going to check and it's standard logic. Our health variable is going to start out at 100. That's not going to be greater so it's not going to fire this off. But once we eat some garbage and our health is already at 100 it's going to add a couple to that and when it comes in our update UI it's going to see that the health is in fact greater than the max health and it just sets it to it. So with that we can save we can come back up here, and when we eat our garbage, notice that, oh, eat, I should say sleep on the street. Remember, we're doing health here, so we're checking health, not food. When we sleep on the street, when health gets to 100, it just stops going up. Our food will keep going down, but health will never go higher. Now, pause the video, stop and write a condition to do the same thing for food. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and did that. And this is just going to be something uh, that you're going to get requirements. Someone will say, hey, do the same thing for the food. Make sure it doesn't go over the max. And then your job as a programmer is to implement it. In this case, it's as simple as copy and pasting this, changing this to food, changing this to max food and changing this to food and changing this to max food. So if our food is greater than the max food, we set it equal to food. And it's just as simple as that. Let's save and run again. And you're going to see that when we eat our sandwich, hey, why is our food still going up? Oh, that's right, because we made it 200, right? <laughs> okay, so here's a perfect example of why we would use these here. So in our start, let's not set it equal to 90. Let's set it equal to max health. And in our food, we don't want to hard code it as 100. We set it to max food because we had hard coded these in, so it was ignoring when we started what variables we set here and just set them. So we can set them here. And... Let's start and re stop it and rerun it. And I can tell we didn't save this. 
Notice, it, you can tell it's not saved because it puts this little asterisk here. That tells us it's dirty, hasn't been saved. We can save it. Come back and rerun. And when we eat our sandwich, our food doesn't go up because we're already at the max. When we sleep on the street, once we get to 100 on our health, it won't go up anymore. And you can see as we toggle back and forth, we'll never extend those, those maximums. Okay, so now, since you know it's only taken us a little over five minutes to implement our first if statements and tie them in, let's go ahead and take it up a step further and say that um, when we buy this sandwich and we're taking our money away, we got to make sure we have enough money, right? So we're going to just do this just for this button, and later in you know, uh, future lectures, we're going to see how we can make all of this a lot more reusable. But for right now, we'll stick with just using this method. So let's create an if statement. So when we click this sandwich button, it will not purchase the sandwich if we don't have enough money for it. So how can we write that condition? We're just going to say if our money minus three, because we're charging three dollars for it, is less, I will say is greater than or equal to zero, then we're going to run these items. So we can put this bracket here and I have to come down here at the end and put an enclosing in in bracket or curly bracket. So this is like the shift key right above enter. We haven't really had to make these ourselves, but when we had one line, we could use this. We, don't, we didn't have to use brackets because after the if statement, there's just one line of code and that's it. So it's concise and that's all there is. But if you have multiple lines under your if statement, then you need to enclose them in brackets just like you do your methods. So this has how we know this method ends and this method starts. This is how we know this if statement starts and this if condition in. So everything inside of here is going to run only if money minus three is greater than zero, then it'll do this. Otherwise, it's just going to ignore it. So let's test that out. We're going to save and we're going to run. And if I hit uh, eat sandwich, notice nothing happens. Nothing at all because when it tries to take that three dollars away it's going to be greater so if I beg for money one time and I try to eat the sandwich I still can't eat the sandwich nothing happens if I beg for money one more time now I have four dollars I can eat the sandwich and watch the food go up and the money go down I only have one dollar now I can't buy any more sandwiches so um, we don't have any message to the user yet that, that'll come later but we can now keep from buying anything that uh, that we can't afford just by using this simple logic. Now, this is poor code. Uh, what one way you could write it better, at least within this method, maybe would be to say int uh, add to money or cost. We'll say int cost equals three. So we're setting a cost here, and then that way we can say money minus cost, and we can come down here money equals money minus cost. So this is a little better because we're not hard coding the three in here. We're putting it up here at the top so we only have to have it in one place. We'll see how to make a much more reusable design later that we're intentionally starting with these very simple building blocks uh, because this is addressed towards beginning programmers that are wanting to learn from the beginning how to build a game like this. Uh, if I was building this from scratch uh, myself uh, and as an advanced programmer, I would not take this approach. I would have already created other classes and other uh, game architectures to make this more reusable. Remember, I'm taking this approach so that someone can follow along who hasn't programmed before, and we will get into more advanced topics that will make our game much more robust and, and easier to extend. But for right now, this is a little better, and you can see clearly what happens here if there's not enough money. But you can see, obviously, for every button and every item we make, we're creating methods and we're having hard-coded values in here. We will get away from that. But 
before we really redesign the game and refactor it, instead let's go ahead and make it so that we can die. Because right now um, that's the one condition you know that we really don't have. We've made it so you can't get too healthy. You know if you're eating sandwiches or uh, sleeping on the street here, you're not going to get any more healthy, and you're not going to get any more food. Uh, obviously you can beg for money but the one thing uh, that we can't do if we keep eat begging and we keep begging we keep working our at some point we hit negative health but it just keeps going and this is where we want to have a condition for death so this really is the conditions lecture you're, you're getting a chance to do them I would you know encourage pausing the video see if you can create um, a condition that will identify that the person has died and you don't have to um, show the message yet um, just show the condition and create a and call a method called uh, you died um, but try yourself to implement that and maybe take from our first uh, lecture the debug.log and just debug log out to the console that you've died so that's kind of a big challenge if you've never programmed before, if you've programmed a lot and you're kind of using this course to reinforce uh, your, your programming skills, that's a good thing to do. And it would be then a very good thing to do to try to write in uh, so that the person's died. Write it out to the console that they've died. So hopefully you tried to do it. I'm going to jump over and show you how. You could put it pretty much any uh, you know place inside this update UI. I would maybe even put it at the end. So after they have their health actually goes to below zero or zero or below, and it shows it. So we're actually seeing it because if you have them die before you see it, then it might look kind of weird. So if the, if we get to the end, this update UI and we say if the health of the person is less than or equal to zero then let's call you died so we're going to call another method and we'll make it here public void you died so it's separate and we just come in here and say debug log the player died or you died <clears throat> and that's all there is to it now we also want to make it if it's less than zero of food they died also we'll add that in a second but let's just test this out we're gonna run here and you could change the health variable be smaller to test it faster that's a, a trick we all often use when programming so we don't have to click so much but as soon as we get the health going down notice it fired off the player died and every time we click this it's gonna continue to show them dying over and over again because it, it's just going to keep firing that. And this is uh, collapsed, so it only shows unique messages. So that's why you don't see it each time it happens. It just keeps a counter over here on the right to show each time it happens. So nine times you've died, and it just keeps going down. So now um, that we've gotten that far, let's see. Well, what about the food? Well, one way we could do that would be just to add another condition. You could say if food is less than or equal to zero then call the same method you died so that, that this is completely legitimate in terms of uh, getting the, the right result but it's probably not as good a code and there's a, a something you can learn here and it's a good way to probably end this chapter on simple conditions is we can use an R condition and an R condition um, in some language you would actually like write out R here but not in C sharp we use a double pipe and that's usually the key right above the inner key you just hold down shift and it's the key right above the inner key and you just put two of those in there like that and that means R and we say if health is less than or equal to zero R food is less than or equal to zero we'll say you died now another option and this is uh, just to throw in there for you that you could do is not do it this way what you could do is say, if the food is less than or equal to zero, like that, then say health equals health minus 10, for example. So what this means is once you run out of food, 
that and it's less than or equal to zero. If once you run out of food, you just don't die. Oh, I ran out of food, I'm dead. Nah, maybe that's not as uh, clever as saying if I've run out of food, we're going to start taking away significantly from health. And you could put this in another method if you wanted. And I say that you do that as an exercise. Take maybe and put this uh, condition in another method. Did you stop the tape, top the video and do that? If not, that's okay. I'm just gonna do it for you real quick. Let's just move this to say, uh, check for death. Or check, check for hunger. Let's do check for hunger first. So we're gonna make a, a variable called public void check for hunger. That. And we have our open bracket and our curly bracket, close curly bracket. And we just bring this into here, just like that, check for hunger. And then what we could do, I mean, we really could do this, is just bring this in there as well. We check for hunger and health at the same time. Oops, I lost it somehow out of my clipboard. Hmm, well, lucky for me. I know what I typed like that. So we could say check for hunger and death if we wanted to make this a little more clear like that. So this becomes a little cleaner. We we're not updating. We're not getting this so complex. At the same time, we could make a public void clamp health and food and move this in there like that and you could go on so far as to have a next day method to encapsulate this and an update labels UI labels to update these so as you can see um, how you develop your game is going to depend a lot on how you compose your methods and your properties. If you end up with lots of code inside of one of these methods, you're probably not doing something right. It's better to break them down. And the longer and bigger they get, uh, the more then you need to take a break and refactor and say, how can I redesign this so that I don't have one method that has 200 lines of code in it or have one class possibly like in this case we're starting to get kind of long maybe for a game manager it's doing a lot of things having one class that's more than a few hundred lines or, or, or more now that rule is broken a lot um, for practicality but in general um, your principles are try to make methods so they only do one thing and even more to the point is try to create classes and class behaviors that are responsible for doing one thing and we're going to see that as we now move out of our first section here this is kind of the wrap up of the very very beginning part we've learned about variables we've learned about conditions we've learned how to hook them into our game and you've got a framework here where you could actually make kind of a fun little game um, just with the tools you have here it might not be the best design game in the world it would have obvious limitations but even with what you've learned here uh, there is so much you can do and so many other types of games you can make just by being able to store variables and based upon certain conditions change what you display on the screen or update a variable. So with that said we're wrapping this section up and in the next section we're going to look at how to redesign this game so that our items that we click on and use are much more modular and better designed so we're not creating methods new methods like this every time we need to add an item to our game